So on this slide, we talk about loss of exactness of sheaves when you pass from small sets to the entire space. And then we will continue and talk about flabby sheaves and uh, flabby resolutions of these sheaves. So you start by fixing an open set of the entire space X. Yeah, and you consider a short exact sequence of sheaves. Yeah, you have 0 to F1U to F2U to F3U to 0. So the important point to notice is when you pass from U to the entire space X, this sequence might not be exact anymore. So basically what will happen here is that you know in, in this short exact sequence of sheaves the first map from F1 to F2 is injective and F2 to F3 is rejective. But when you take this uh, sequence on the entire space X, this last map from F2 to F3 may not be surjective anymore. So that is how you lose the exactness. So let us write this down. So from U as open set of X, you pass on to the entire topological space X. So this map is no longer surjective. Uh, this may, might not be a onto map. So this we can describe by an example. So this example is called exponential sheaf sequence. Yeah, so say OM, this is a sheaf of holomorphic functions. And OM star as a sheaf of non-vanishing holomorphic functions. The sheaf of non vanishing holomorphic functions. So we have a sheaf morphism from OM to OM star via the exponential map. Yeah, so exponential of xy is exponential of x plus exponential of y. So it obeys the homomorphism properties. So we have an exact sequence yeah, on small sets. So if you take in small sets, the sequence will be exact. But if you take the entire space as a punctured disk that is say complex plane minus zero. Yeah, but on the entire space, say the entire space is the puncture disk, you take the complex plane and you take zero out of it. Then there is a loss of surjectivity here from OM to OM star. Yeah, so this map OM to OM star is no longer surjective 
on the entire space of complex plane minus the origin. So why is it so? This is because the identity function which is a part of OM star is not an exponential of a holomorphic functions on C minus 0. So the identity function which is a part of OM star does not come from any section of OM on complex minus 0. Yeah, because exponential of 0 gives you the ID function and 0 is not even there. So 0 is missing. Yeah, so you can't take exponential of 0 and then get the ID map. Okay, there is an important thing we should recall here. Notice that you can go from this 0 to F1, U to F2, U to F3, U. This short exact sequence on small open sets. This passes on perfectly to stocks. Yeah, there is no loss of exactness if you go from this open set to stocks. So let us talk about another definition. So a sheaf F on topological space X is flasque or flabby. So you're given a sheaf F on a topological space X. So this sheaf is flasque or flabby. If for uh, u as open set of x, say the restriction map from fx to fu, so you will have a map obviously in the other direction. This map is surjective. So a flabby sheaf on a topological space X is flasque or flabby. If you are given an open subset U of X and you have the restriction map from FX to FU, this map is surjective. Yeah, this is a very important notion. Now we should talk about sheaf of discontinuous sections of F. So if you are given a sheaf F, you can construct a new sheaf out of it, which is the sheaf of discontinuous sections of F. Now this looks almost like sheafification, but we do not worry about gluing or anything here. So we denote this sheaf by D subscript F and u, we will generally generally drop the subscript f if it is clear from the context. So you define it like this, yeah. So you just take the direct product of all the stocks, yeah, for all the points which lie in the set u. 
So this is naturally a flabby sheaf. Yeah, you have a natural projection from uh, fx to fu. Yeah, in fu you have the direct product for p and x, and fu you have direct product for p and u, and you just uh, project it. Yeah, so you will have an onto map. And we have already constructed this injectiveness before from FU to direct product. So you can see there is a flabby map from F of X to F of U in terms of direct product. You know, whatever points do not lie in U, just map them to zero and you're done. So the idea or the important thing what we are trying to achieve here on this slide is how to form a resolution of a sheaf. So basically we want to form a chain complex out of a sheaf so that we can use cohomology theory onto it. And for that purpose, we are writing this sheaf of discontinuous sections and everything. So this is what we want to do. You are take a sheaf F, you embed it into D1, where D1 is nothing but the, uh, you embed it into D0 where D0 is nothing but the sheaf of discontinuous sections of F and then we define, we will define later on as D1 and D2 but D0 to start with is just DF of U, D subscript F of U. So let us rewrite it. So this much we know, you take 0 to F to D of 0, there is an injective map. I am just copying this map down. This injective map I have described above, F is injective into direct product of its stocks. So now you just put this map, so you copied it down, you just put something like Q0 here. Yeah, Q0 is a kind of a quotient sheaf. So you have to have this exactness. So you put D0 over image of F. Since F injects into D0, you just have F there. Now again copy this down, F to D0 and then you take the sheaf of discontinuous sections of Q0. Yeah, so Q0 now embeds into D1 because D1 is the sheaf of discontinuous sections of Q0. And then you write some Q1 here so that the map gets exact. And to make the map exact, you have to have Q1 equals to D1 over image of D0. And you continue continue so on you have again 0 to F to D0 to D1 now you take sheaf of discontinuous sections of Q1 and denote it as D2 Q1 naturally embeds into D2 and then you write something as Q2 to 0 obviously to make it exact you have to have Q2 as D2 over image of D1 and so on. So you are constructing some exact sequences. So the important point is that every time you have D0, D1, D2 these are constructed by taking the quotient sheaf and taking its discontinuous sections. And that is important. Since you are taking quotient sheaf or taking the quotient at each point at D0, D1, D2, you have, you have that the sheaf is exact at every point. or uh, basically you have a complex and this complex will ensure that d square is 0. So we don't have sheaf as exact but a complex so that this map d here d times d is 0. So image is always contained in the kernel of the next map. Yeah, if it was just if we just stopped at quotient map we would have exactness but quotient map injects into the sheaf of discontinuous sections. And therefore, we have the image is contained in the kernel of the next map. So just by construction, it becomes a complex. 
again the important thing to notice is you can consider these D's as abelian groups but the important thing to notice is that we have formed these quotient maps and out of these quotient maps which were which made the sequences exact we embedded these quotient maps into sheaf of discontinuous sections of the quotient quotient map or quotient sheaf and that is precisely how the complex was constructed yeah so you need to spend some time thinking about it why image is contained in the kernel of the map yeah so what we have done essentially is you have taken a sheaf f and you have made a complex out of it and that is important so you have taken a sheaf f and you have made a complex out of it 